Nuclear submarines are some of the most lethal vessels in the world. When it seems so risky to have miniature nuclear reactors and earth-shattering weapons on board, why would you want them? Well, because they offer massive advantages when stalking and avoiding an enemy, and we're going to take a closer look at what these are. Firstly, let's look at what a nuclear submarine is. The U.S. Navy's latest sub is the Virginia-class submarine. This is manufactured by American aerospace and defense company General Dynamics. It's gone through several iterations, but is typically powered by a single nuclear reactor and can travel at more than 25 knots. The crew includes 15 officers and 117 enlisted personnel. The purpose of the subs is for anti-submarine warfare and intelligence-gathering missions. The Virginia class is powered by a 210 megawatt pressurized water nuclear reactor, which is itself powered by enriched uranium fuel. The subs are powered by these onboard reactors and produce energy by splitting atoms to create heat. This is then used to make steam for turbines that generate electricity to power the movement of the vessel and keep all the internal systems working. To create this all-important steam, the sub pulls in seawater and purifies it using a desalination process. A side effect of this clean water is that it's also used for drinking, the creation of oxygen through hydrolysis, and for scrubbing CO2 and other contaminants out of the air. Diesel-powered subs at first appear to have an advantage over nuclear as they are smaller and run more quietly. This means they can easily slip into shallow waters along coasts or in river estuaries where they are harder to detect. But diesel engines require oxygen for combustion and produce exhaust gases, including carbon dioxide, which needs to be released through a process called snorting. Oxygen generators can assist by producing oxygen from water through electrolysis, but crucially, non-nuclear submarines still need to surface to replenish their oxygen supplies for both the crew and engines. The subs also use diesel generators to charge batteries, which then use the electricity stored in them to run a motor. Just with any battery, however, they go flat. To recharge, they need to surface and do something called snorkeling, bringing in air to run generators. This makes them vulnerable as they can be spotted from the sky or by submarine hunting ships. However, one of the biggest advantages of nuclear is that the reactor does not have to be refueled over its 30-year lifespan. This means the nuclear sub doesn't need to come up for air in the same way. The only thing that holds it back is the needs of the crew and running out of fuel. A sub that can be at depths for longer is one that can remain out of enemy sight for longer and can also dive deeper into enemy territory without planning to surface. Another big advantage is speed. Current diesel submarines are also limited to slow speeds of 20 knots or around 37 kilometers per hour. With the introduction of nuclear power, previously slow subs were now capable of sustaining speeds of 30 knots or 56 kilometers per hour along with more time submerged. These extra speeds meant that nuclear subs were now much better suited to outmaneuvering potential threats, including hostile submarines and surface ships tasked with hunting subs. But that's if they get detected at all. A key strategic advantage of nuclear submarines is their ability to survive a first strike attack. Their stealthy state while submerged gives them a powerful deterrent, discouraging the outbreak of any kind of hostility in the first place. Another stealthy advantage is noise, or lack of it. With fewer moving parts than a diesel model, nuclear submarines can be quieter than their diesel equivalents, which makes them perfect for stealth missions behind enemy lines. The technology has been developed to such a point that in 2009, British and French nuclear subs carrying ballistic missiles accidentally ran into each other in the Atlantic Ocean. As for safety concerns, these are no more greater than a traditional sub. There are no known nuclear reactor meltdowns involving submarines. When things go wrong, it's usually for the reasons any sub can run into trouble, because of water depth and pressure or equipment malfunctions. The nuclear risk is well understood and closely managed by all navies that own a nuclear vessel. The nuclear sub was developed in the Cold War era, when they would often have nuclear missiles on board as a deterrent to warfare. Now, in the post-Cold War era, the weapons may have changed, but the threat to the enemy remains. In fact, 
that threat to the enemy is arguably greater as these subs are now equipped with weapons they're more likely to use. They are likelier to be equipped with Tomahawk missiles that have conventional explosive payloads than with nuclear missiles they'll likely never fire. For example, each Ohio-class sub, which is capable of carrying nuclear Trident missiles, can carry 154 Tomahawk cruise missiles, 50% more than U.S. guided missile destroyers pack and almost four times what the U.S. Navy's newest attack subs are armed with. Each of these Tomahawks can carry up to a 1,000-pound high-explosive warhead. As we've already explored, a submarine powered by onboard nuclear reactors has a nearly limitless range and superior maneuverability. Add to this the fact that it can be placed in far-flung waters across the globe with no need to surface except for crew provisions every three months or so. This means at least six international navies, the US, Russia, Great Britain, France, China, and India all have nuclear submarines in their fleets. A massive benefit of these subs is the ability to launch a hugely destructive missile before the enemy. A nuclear submarine means that it's powered by a nuclear reactor, not because it necessarily has nuclear warheads on board. But if they do have these kinds of weapons on board, they'll be able to launch them faster than their land-based equivalent. Submarine-launched missiles strike their targets with a nuclear payload in only 15 minutes. Land-based missiles take 30 minutes to reach their destination. Timeliness is a massive advantage if you're attempting to annihilate a foe with an overwhelming first strike. A modern nuclear-powered attack submarine can simultaneously carry torpedoes, land attack cruise missiles, special forces personnel, and even UAVs. This allows it to undertake numerous types of missions on demand without needing to return to base and reconfigure first. Australia is the latest nation to invest in nuclear subs. They abandoned the contract with the French for conventional diesel-powered equivalents. They've most likely done this because of the threat from China. The new subs are likely to be operated to seek and destroy enemy submarines and surface ships, protect power ashore with Tomahawk cruise missiles and special operations forces, carry out intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions, support battle group operations, and engage in mine warfare, all of which can be done by nuclear subs faster and for longer. Although the Cold War has ended, it doesn't mean that nuclear subs aren't still incredibly useful. Their lack of need to come to the surface has huge advantages over more conventional vessels which means they are more likely to evade the enemy and then destroy them if they come face to face with an adversary. What do you think about nuclear subs? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Spotlight for more. Thanks for watching.